All right, guys, I'm back. And so I want to be able to um, be comprehensive. So I went back and looked at the other video and there's some stuff that um, I left out. So, um, yeah, here it goes. So I left off talking about Jeremiah 7 and Jeremiah 44. And in those chapters, um, there is talking about cakes being made to the Queen of Heaven. And um, th that's a very important, um, those are two terms, the cakes and the queen of heaven. Uh, that's very important for us to kind of flesh out. And I failed to do that on that last video. You saw how I was getting anxious, you know, about the time. So um, if you look and you Google the queen of heaven, it will take you to um, the pagan roots of where that term, you know, actually comes from. And if you Google um, cakes to the queen of heaven and put in hot cross buns, then that uh, information, you know, will come up as well. I actually put some stuff in the description box on that first video um, that I just did. Uh, so you can go and look at the link you know, that I, I found a couple, you know, I thought that were interesting. But um, like I said, just continue to do your own um, investigation about this. And then it's going to link you up with the Catholic Church. Hot cross buns. Hot cross buns is something that are very um, popular today during Lent um, with the Catholic, you know, church. So the food, the symbolism, the queen of heaven that's um that's like mary worship that's going on in the catholic church jesus said nothing about his mother being worshiped and you can't tell catholics that though jesus said nothing about the disciples being turned into saints you can't tell catholics that though um nothing about saint worship you know all worship is supposed to be given to the lord and anything and anybody that you try to you know put into that you are turning your attention from him and you are putting it on this idol uh, thing that you have went and and believed in because it's it's tradition you know now to believe in it people don't even question it they don't even think about you know well well who thought you know about this or where did jesus you know say that it was you know something that he wanted you know to do you're not gonna find that but again, you can't tell Christians, you know, this kind of stuff. So um, going back to that um, that uh, passage in Matthew 15, where he was talking about uh, where, because I want to get it right, Matthew 15, because um, he's, he, he didn't come for everybody. You know, this is the realization that, People, serious people who are worshiping the Lord are just going to have to understand. Everybody has the option. Everybody has the choice. Everybody has the opportunity. But because we know the nature of men, we know that everybody is not going to take him up on that opportunity. I mean, one of the prophets said that the gates of hell has been enlarged from its original intent because people's hearts are so you know, hard hardened, you know, against the Lord. So that's just a reality. And the Lord, his primary um, objective was to come for the, um, the house of Israel, the lost tribes of the house of Israel. And so all Gentiles, all people who are not of that, um, that lineage, they, if they choose, and this is also, um, biblical with a where when god gave you know he was given the commandments he said even the stranger you know if the stranger wants to come in to and get with his program then they're welcome so that's where the opportunity for the gentiles comes in and they get to be grafted in to the tree that is israel um and they get to uh, come in with the full rights and privileges you know of those who are of the lineage so they're supposed to be treated equally as brothers and sisters of the faith. 
And that's the way I actually try to um, approach Christians because I don't know which one of them is going to be of that nature that's going to accept, you know, his word. So I try to treat everybody the same, Christians and non-believers alike. Because I don't know. They're going to be non-believers that will believe and come into be grafted, you know, into um, the kingdom. So, I, like I said, I try to treat everybody the same. And so, um, let me go here to Matthew 15. So, he said that... Every, uh, it's verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up. The plants which the heavenly father hath not planted, that's the wicked. That's that's those who teach and live and repel his word. So those whom he has planted are children of dark, children of light. So those who he has planted, Israel, those are the ones that belong to him. Those are the ones that he planted. Those are the ones that's, those are his children. And so um, there was another scripture that the Lord, and this is unrelated to the queen of heaven and all that. I'm going to digress because I want to get this in here too. So Matthew 5, I think this is where the Beatitudes are. Um. Yeah, so I'm just going to say this right now. I just encourage you guys to go through the Beatitudes and really just, you know, read them and take them in. But number nine is should be the knockout punch for anybody who who really wants to cling and say that they believe in violence. It says, blessed are the peacemakers. It didn't say blessed are the violence. It didn't say blessed are uh, those who commit, who use self-defense. It said, Blessed are the peacemakers. And it's impossible for peacemakers to be violent. And then it goes on to say that those people, the peacemakers, well, they shall be called the children of God. So, um, you know, I'm, I don't know how much he's going to have me continue to talk about violence, but I wanted to be able to put that in there since he, you know, wanted me to put this, you know, in, you know, right now. Okay. So, looking at the Queen of Heaven, High Cross Buns, the Catholic Church. So, where did the Catholic Church get this from? Rome. And I've said this before. A lot of these pagan customs that have creeped into, you know, um, God's people, into their hearts and minds, have come from the marriage of Rome, Constantine, and the church. So, there were church leaders at that time that forsook the word of God and they aligned themselves up with Rome. That's the same thing that was going on during Jesus' time. That's the same thing that um, went on after Jesus with uh, Constantine. And that's the same thing that's going on today. All those religious leaders that you saw that was lining up and pledging their allegiance to Donald Trump are doing the same thing. They are nationalists. They have no loyalty to God, and they're repeating history, and they're forsaking God's word and his people so that they can um, combine their efforts with the state. So they are state churches. They have aligned themselves with the government, the state of government. So just like the Roman Catholic Church is the, the Catholic Church married up to Rome, that's what the United States um, clergy have done to their people today when they went and encouraged them to go and vote for Donald Trump. So would you guys and if whoever it is, if this is you and you went and voted, you know, for either one of them, you know, if you had clergy lining up behind Hillary Clinton, or if you had clergy lining up behind Donald Trump, they both served the same purpose and they both got the people, they sold the people out and they have, you know, um, went go in for the power and prestige and opportunity that the government, you know, is offering them. So, um, it's, it's bad. It's really bad. So what else did I want to talk about? Oh, I have a correction, you know, to make. I was saying that, um, I couldn't remember Passover being talked about in some of the other places in the Bible. 
and I'm wrong. Okay, so it's a mess. So um, I'm, I'm wrong about that. And then I put a link that has um, verses that talk about Passover in the Bible. So I would encourage you to go look at that. So just really kind of want to reiterate um, the cultish nature of religion. And I was talking about that a little bit in the video when I said um, when they were talking about washing their hands and, and how they added the traditions of the fathers as a method of control. That's what religion does. So uh, the Pope, he controls Catholics all over the world. So if that joke could tell Catholics to get up and do something, those that actually believe in him, the blind followers, uh, following the blind leader that's going to end up in a ditch, that's what's going to happen to those people who don't have sense enough to understand that he's given them an unlawful, you know, order. And uh, Hebrew roots and the, the Hebrew Israelites are turning into what Christianity is. So they're becoming cults. And there's a video of this lady who um, has decided to uh, go back to Christmas. So she was introduced to the truth about Christmas through Hebrew roots. And she was following them. And then she's, I think she said for about two years, she stopped celebrating Christmas. And then she went back into scripture. And when it figured out and twisted Jeremiah 10 around and she went and got some scripture that Paul was talking about, I want to say in Colossians, where he was like, don't um, judge anybody for what they eat in the days that they, you know, worship, you know. Um, and then she fixed, I guess, some other scripture. And now she's reconciled it in her heart. Why it's okay for her to go back, you know, into celebrating Christmas. And I really... Uh, and interested, you know, what anybody, you know, um, that maybe knows the truth, maybe, you know, will discover it. What you think, you know, about um, what she had to say? My take on it, and I made some comments, you know, on that video. So if she hasn't deleted them, then you should be able to see, you know, what I, you know, had to say to her. And my thing to her is, okay, fine. If you want to go back and, and, and turn your back on Jesus and be like that sow that's wallowing in the mire, if that's what you want to do, then you do that. But don't get on YouTube and try and encourage other people to follow you. That, I mean, I mean, if I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, that's me. And I do this even in my own videos. I tell you, I, this is what I'm doing in my worship. You make your own decision. And I strongly encourage you to go to the Holy Spirit. And if it's something that I'm telling that's the truth and you really, you know, hungry and thirsty for it, you should find out whether I'm lying or whether, you know, I'm telling the truth. So I leave it up to you. But yeah, I really felt sorry for that lady, you know. So I'm, I'm digging in her butt, you know, when you read the comments. But just to let you know, I feel sorry for her. It's, it's like what we were talking about. Um, when um, it says, uh, what is it, the dog that goes back to his own vomit. Or the sow that uh, goes back to the mire. And that part in Second Peter, where it's talking about, it would be better for you to have not have known. He said, for you to know the truth, and then for you to turn around and go back, you know, into sin and do stuff that you know that, that you've been awakened to. He said that, um, you know, it would be better for you not to know the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. So just really something for people to think about. So when you start, you go back and you start thinking about whether or not you want to, you know, um, worship Easter and knowing what you know about hot cross buns and the queen of heaven and what the Lord has said about that, you know, in Jeremiah, looking at how he feels about idol worship. I mean, the golden calf, that should be something that tells us how he feels about idol worship. I mean, the commandment. He's got the Ten Commandments in two places. It's in Deuteronomy 5 and it's in um, Exodus 20. And both of them line up with one another. And the first commandment is um, how we're not supposed to, how God is the, is how the Father is our only source of worship. And then the second one that talks about the different kinds of things that he does not want us to idolize. There's a scripture in First John that says, uh, little children, keep yourself from idols. I mean, um, I'm trying to think. I'll 
go and do a Google search and, and put a link in there, you know, just talking about different um, Bible scriptures that sit up and talk about idolatry. I, I can already guarantee it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a whole list of them. So it's going to be up to you. You have to go and look and see and look at the heart of God instead of looking at the heart of men, you know. What does he, how does he feel about idolatry? We already know we love idolatry. I mean, look at Tim Tebow. That joker, like I said, can't even go and preach God's word because he loves idolatry so much. That's how tasty and delicious it is when you're getting it, you know? And I was thinking about this too. If I'm really fortunate. It's, it's backwards. But I am fortunate that I was not successful in my um, sexual sin. Because if it was something that I actually gained from and something that I had pleasure in, I probably still be doing it, you know. But because it didn't profit me anything and it was causing a negative, you know, in my life, it caused me, the pain of it caused me to actually desire to come out of it. So that when the Lord's word came around, I was like, you know what, I'm tired of this anyway. All right, Lord, you know, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to do what you, what you are commanding, you know, us to do. And so that's the gift of it. That's like what I was saying in the other video. If you're convicted in your sin, and you're crying out to Jesus to help you, and that's the gift. You know, you got people who aren't convicted in their sin, like the woman in that video. I don't know. I just don't understand how she lived with herself. I mean, knowing that you're going back to something that you understood to be a sin. And I don't see any pleasure in it. So the other thing that I wanted to be able to put in uh, to this is um, a correlation that I saw with Cain. And let me go there. I was talking with, uh, with a believer on, uh, I want to say it was Google Plus, uh, maybe. And um, the point that was brought out was, and I feel this too, I really agree, you know, with what was said, was the, the horror, the horror that people in hell are going to feel when they realize that they, they, they are separated, you know, from God for eternity. I mean, for those, especially Christians, that really knew, you know, the Father, but then chose, you know, to do different things like sin and to believe in their lying preachers and their lying churches, that's some pain. That is some pain when if you sat down and you actually went through and let the Holy Spirit teach you God's word, you had that chance. You had that opportunity to turn around and make the right decision. So and then you saw how I read to you, I think it was in Jeremiah 44, how they went and told him. They was like, man, we ain't going to listen to nothing you're trying to tell us. That's Christianity all day. All day. So, I mean, it's going to be up to you guys. I'm praying. I'm praying the power of the Holy Spirit on this, on all my videos, but especially, you know, this one. Um, this is... um. These two, you know, talking about, you know, Christmas and Easter, because I'm going to tell you, for anybody that can hear this message, it's going to, it's really going to do a release. You're going to be able to shake yourself loose from the demonic lies that are coming out of that Christian church. And that is my main mission, is to be able to pull as many jokers out of that fire as I possibly, possibly can. So any, you know, believer who loves Jesus, I want y'all out of that mess and into the truth hallelujah so let's go to genesis 4 genesis 4 and um so this is cain so if you go and you start at you know what you start at one and then you get down to um five when cain gave the offering and then Ab i mean yeah abel's was taken and um well, four and five. Abel's was taken in four, and Cain's was rejected. And then Cain and five is mad because, you know, his sacrifice wasn't accepted. And then um, it says in six, And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? In seven, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and until thee, shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him so that's very that's exactly what i was talking about it says and i'll go over it you know again 
if thou do as well. That means that if thou does what is right, shalt thou not be accepted? If you do what is right, then you're going to get the reward of doing right. And if thou do is not well, if thou do is wrong, sin lies at the door. So if you do wrong, then you're going to walk into sin. And unto thee shall be his desire. So sin is going to be your, your first desire instead of him. Instead of being able to do right, doing wrong is what you would prefer to do. And thou shalt rule over him. And your sin is going to rule over you. That goes back to everything I talked about in Second Peter. That goes to the stuff that I talked about. Um, what when the Lord um was saying, "Oh my goodness, hold on, let me get it. Hold on." Okay, when the Lord was talking about it in Matthew twelve and in Luke eleven, when He was saying that the man had came out of sin and then got himself clean and then took seven spirits, um, worse, and let them come and dwell inside and then his situation was worse this this time than it was you know when he was out you know before so all of that co collaborates because when you choose sin then that's your master sin is your master same thing with these demons that you're picking in the government you're giving them allegiance over you so everybody that either voted for donald trump or hillary clinton you gave them allegiance Anything that the government does to you, you signed on to it when you voted for this joker. So you gave him a blank check. You gave him a check with your mouth that your behind is not going to be able to catch. So you're trusting in a nation that cannot save you. You're trusting in lying words that cannot save you. And you're trusting in sin that can't save you. I mean, pagan worship can't save you. It's nothing that you're going to be able to get out of it. So, um, like I said, I'm going to put this information down there. Um, I guess anything else that he might have me to do, I can pick it up. But um, just wanted to be able to, to give that extra, you know, level of testimony. So, thank you guys for your time and attention. Um, I appreciate your support. If there's something that you feel like um, you could, you're led to share, Please help me get this out. You know, this is, you know, my opportunity to do that level of contribution, you know, to the world. And I need help, you know, doing that. I'm making the videos, but I can't disseminate them, you know, out. It's going to take, you know, the body of Christ working together to help me, you know, do that. So um, I always thank everybody, you know, who's helping me in prayer. I really appreciate y'all. Okay. So have a good night.